Good day students, uh, welcome to MyFoodServe.com. In this installment, we're going to be going over problems 1 to 5 of the Algebra 1 Common Core Regents exam for 2014. Feel free to visit our website at MyFoodServe.com for a wide variety of math tutorials ranging from algebra all the way to calculus. Alright, let's take a look at question number 1. It says when solving the equation 4 times 3x squared plus 2, e I mean minus 9 equals 8x squared plus 7, Emily wrote 4 times the quantity 3x squared plus 2 equals 8x squared plus 16 as her first step. Which property justifies Emily's first step? Is it the addition, property of equality, commutative property of addition, multiplication property of equality, or the distributive property of multiplication over addition. So in order for us to determine um, the property that justifies her step, let's go ahead and carry out the process that she did, okay? So four times three X squared plus two minus nine equals eight X squared plus seven. So this is a problem in her first step she had four times 3x squared plus 2. Now this a 9 seems not to be there anymore and this plus 7 changed to 16. So what do you think she did to both sides of the equation to um, cause this 9 to cancel out? Well what she did is she did the opposite. She added 9 to both sides of the equation. So she added a 9 here and then added a 9 here and then that's why minus 9 plus 9 becomes 0. And they have 8x squared plus 16. Okay, so if you want to basically, on, um, if you want to uh, understand or see what someone's thought process is, it's good to actually try and execute the steps yourself, so it becomes more obvious what the person's thought process is. So we can see what um, Emily was doing here. She added nine to both sides of the equation to cancel out the minus 9 over here. So since she added 9, this is addition, she added the same thing to both sides of the equation, which does not change the um, equality, the equation at all. What property is that? Since it's addition, it's simply the addition property of equality. Okay? Alright, so let's uh, do a real quick review of our properties um, so that we can know for sure that this is the correct answer. Addition property of equality basically states that if A is equal to B, then, let me use the then word, <clears throat> then, what does that mean? Then, um, A plus C is equal to B plus C. So basically, if you add the same thing to both sides, equality is preserved. So that's the addition property of equality. Commutative property of addition just tells you that A plus B is equal to B plus A. Addition commutes. Multiplication property of equality just tells you that if A is equal to B, just like in case number one, then if you multiply the same number to both sides, equality is preserved. A times C is equal to B times C. There goes your multiplication property of equality. Distributive property of multiplication over addition just basically tells you that A times B plus C is equal to distribute B A to B and C, and you get um, A times B plus C is equal to AB plus BC. All right, so the um, correct property that was applied here is the addition property of equality. All right, let's take a look at question two. It says officials in a town use a function C to analyze traffic patterns. C of N represents the rate of traffic through an intersection where N is the number of observed vehicles in a specified time interval. What would be the most appropriate domain for the function? So you want to remember what domain means. Domain basically means acceptable inputs, okay? Acceptable inputs into the function. So in this situation, our domain is also known as the independent variable. So if you have C sub n, this is the function. And this right here is the input or the, okay? 
input, and then any acceptable domain values we get plugged in here. So our domain is basically the set of um, number of observed vehicles. That's what our domain is. So which of them will be appropriate, will be most appropriate? So if you think about number of vehicles, um, and then you're making an observation. How many vehicles can you expect to see? Let's say you're making an observation. You could see no vehicles at all go by, or you could see one vehicle, two vehicles. You can see a lot of vehicles, right? So which of these makes sense? Now let's take a look at negative numbers. The set of negative integers, does it make sense to see negative vehicles? The answer is no, it's not possible to have ve negative vehicles. So these two options with negative values in the domain are not appropriate because there is no such thing as negative vehicles. Now let's look at set three and four. Which one is most appropriate? One half. Is there anything, is it possible to see like you, you, you're making an observation and then you see half a car driving down the street? Does that make any sense? It doesn't make sense to have half a vehicle, right? The car has to be whole. It has to be an integer. So any um, domain that contains um, fractional elements, that's not appropriate because there is no such thing as half a vehicle um, driving on the street. Okay, so that means that option number three makes is not appropriate. Option four is perfect because you can have no vehicle. You can have one, two, three. The set of um, whole uh, natural numbers is, is basically an appropriate domain for this function. So our answer is quest, um, option number four. All right, let's take a look at question three. It says if A is equal to 3x squared plus 5x minus 6 and B is equal to negative 2x squared minus 6x plus 7, then A minus B equals. Um, so here we are subtracting polynomials. All right. Anytime you're subtracting polynomials, you have to be really careful with the signs. The common, most common mistake most students make in subtracting polynomials is errors associated with the sign. So be really careful with that, okay? So A minus B, we have A, which is 3x squared plus 5x minus 6. And we're going to subtract B, which is negative 2x squared minus 6x plus 7. Anytime I'm subtracting polynomials, I like to do it in a um, vertical orientation so I can keep my work organized and avoid making mistakes. A stays the same, 3x squared plus 5x minus 6. And then I have to distribute the minus to all these three terms. So I'll have negative, I'm sorry, it's not negative. We're going to be making the same mistake that I was asking um, you not to make. All right, wait, minus times minus is positive, so you have 2x squared plus minus times minus plus 6x, and then minus times plus minus 7. All right, so make sure you distribute the negative to all the terms um, inside, the, inside the parentheses, okay? Now let's go ahead and um, combine them since I've already distributed the minus. Remember, subtraction is the same thing as adding the opposite. So we already found the opposite of this, so we can just add this downwards. So we have 5x squared plus 11x minus 13. Okay, remember when you're adding, when you're combining terms, if the signs are the same, you add and keep the sign, right? If the signs are different, you subtract and um, keep the sign of the bigger. So this one, signs are the same, add and keep the sign, add and keep the sign. And we can see that our answer to number two, uh, three is option number two. All right, let's take a look at question number four. We're given two linear inequalities, y plus x greater than two, and y less than or equal to three x minus two. The question is, which graph shows the solution of the given set of inequalities? So before we um, find out what the answer is, let's do a real quick review on how to describe the shading and style patterns of systems of linear inequalities. All right, so let's do a real quick grid for you right here. There are two things you want to keep in mind. The first thing is the uh, shade. And then um, the other thing you want to keep in mind is the line style, the line style. 
All right, so your shading, there are two parts of a line that you could shade. Assuming that you have a, your slope is defined, okay? You don't have a vertical line. If you have a defined slope, you can either shade the bottom, or let's see, you can either shade the bottom, which is downwards, or you can shade the top, which is the up, upward part of the um, line, all right? And then for the line style, there are two possible line styles that you have. The first one is broken. It could be broken, or the second style is it could be solid. All right? So for your shading, you could either shade the top or the bottom. And then for your um, <clears throat> line style, it could either be solid or broken. So that, that's just a little grid for you to know how the um, lines look like. All right, so for if a line is broken, in inequality notation, that means that the line is excluded from the solution region. So if you shade in the bottom and it's broken, that is less than, all right? If you are um, shading the bottom and it's solid, that means the line is included, so that is less than or equal to, all right? If you shade in the top, and it's broken, that's greater than. And if you're shading the top and it's solid, that's greater than or equal to. Okay, so that's basically what you want to keep in mind. Now, this is applicable only to inequalities in uh, slope intercept form. Okay, so the inequality must be, must be in slope intercept form. What on earth is that? What is the slope intercept form? It has to be in the form y less than or equal less than um, let me see less than let me just put y is equal to um, there there are four different cases so y and then mx plus b right it could be less than it could be less than or equal to it could be greater than it could be greater than or equal to any of this inequalities, but well, you must have y to your left and then you have mx plus b to your right, okay? So let's look at this problem. In this problem, we have the first equation, y plus x is greater than 2. This is kind of in standard form. So I can't use this grid to describe my line if it's in standard form. Well, so I do change it to slope intercept form. So to do that, I'll I need to get y by itself, so I just subtract x from both sides, okay? So this equation basically becomes y. Do not change the inequality because we did not multiply or divide by negative, okay? So it's y greater than negative x plus 2. And then uh, y, the other one is, is great, right? It's already in slope-intercept format because you have y by itself. So you have y is less than or equal to 3x minus 2. Okay, now, um, just by looking at the orientation of these two lines, I do not need to even graph it. I can just look at them and know what the answer is. That's how, that's the beauty of knowing what a line looks like based on the, the information from the inequality. Now, the first line has a negative slope, so the line going down is broken any shade down, okay? The shading is downwards. How do I know that? There's no line here, so it's broken, and since, oh, I'm sorry, shade up, is greater than, <coughs> let's write that again. This is broken, shade up. Remember, greater than is up, right? So broken, and a shade up, because it's greater. And then this one, you see that line there means it's gonna be solid. And where do you shade? Since it's less than, less means under, you're going to shade down. Now let's look at the options here to see if we can figure out the answer just using this information. <coughs> Option one and three can easily be eliminated. Why is that? Because the two lines are solid. Okay, but the inequalities tell us that one of them has to be broken. All right. Okay, now let's take a look at options Three, two and four, they look identical, but the shading is kind of different. So the shading should help us figure out what the answer is. 
Now, if you look at the first line, it says the line with the negative slope. What is negative slope? The line that's going down. The line with the negative slope has to be shaded above. Okay? So which of them fits that description? You see this line with the uh, negative slope right here, the line going down? The shading is above. And then in this case right here, the line with the negative slope going down, the shading is beneath. So which is the correct answer? You have to shade up, so our answer is option number two. All right? If you don't want to do this and you want to waste time, you can go ahead and graph these two lines and then you find out, you'll still find out that um, the correct answer is option number uh, two, okay? Because if you look at the second inequality is less than, so you have to shade down. So the solid line, you have to shade beneath the line. But if you look at this one right here, you're shading above the line. Look at this as a roof, okay? You're shading above, which is wrong. You have to shade beneath. So this is the excellent uh, choice right here, option number two. All right, let's take a look at problem five. Uh, we are to solve the equation. Uh, actually, let me read it for you. It says, which value of x satisfies the equation? Seven third times the quantity x plus nine over 28 equals 20. So the value that satisfies the equation is basically the solution. Okay, so all you're doing here is we're just solving for x. This is just a fancy way to say solve this equation. All right, so let's go ahead and solve this equation. First thing we're going to do, we can conveniently get rid of the seven right here, seven thirds. I meant to say. So we're going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 7 thirds, which is 3 over 7. You see, multiplying both sides by the reciprocal is the same thing as dividing both sides by 7 over 3. Okay? All right, so this divides with that, you get 1. That divides with that, you get 1. And then you have x plus 9 over 28. Now, how do you multiply fractions? You multiply the top and bottom across, right? So 60 over 7. Now, lastly, I'm going to subtract 9 over 28 from both sides. 9 over 28. Subtract 9 over 28. And then your answer is going to be x equals. Now, 60 over 7 minus 9 over 28. We could do this by hand, but if you look at the options, they're all in decimal format. So um, this is a nice problem where we can take full advantage of our calculators. So let's go ahead and plug this into our calculator. What we are calculating is 60 divided by 7 minus 9 divided by 28. Enter, and your answer is 8.25. All right, so there goes our answer, 8.25. And our correct answer is option number one 8.25 option one all right so that's that so thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation feel free to subscribe to our channel for updates to other cool clips such as this and do visit our site at mapsserve.com on the test prep you can gain access to the remainder of these um, review series and also you can post a comment to let us know what you think about this tutorial thanks again for watching have a wonderful day